All right, so what we're doing here is we're taking a lower mileage engine that the owner has the history on and knows that it's a good engine. We've done an oil analysis on it. The results came back very good, but while it's out, we're just freshening it up. What we're doing is basically what you're able to do in your own garage with few select tools. We're not sending it out to get machined in any way. If we did that, we would get a higher mileage engine and just rebuild it completely. And, and what would be involved in that is boring the cylinders out, putting oversized pistons in it, replacing the pistons, decking the block, decking the head, redoing the valve seats and guides in the head, but that also adds a couple thousand dollars to the rebuild, um, and this engine isn't necessarily needing that. We are cleaning it up, we are uh, deglazing the cylinders, replacing the rings and the bearings, checking out the valves, replacing the valve seals, and basically making it so the oil stays inside the engine, making this truck good for another million kilometers. This is basically just to show you what you can do in your own garage on a limited budget um, with something that you know um, the history of. We will be getting into higher horsepower builds later, so stay tuned coming back to the channel. Um, we'll be building some crazy horsepower engines later and be getting our machine shop involved in that build. That will involve um, uh, different turbos, uh, more fuel, O-ringed, um, all those fun things, but that's not what this build is about, so let's get into it. All right, your parts are clean, you're ready to start assembly. Now comes the eternal debate. What is the proper engine reassembly lube? 10 different engine builders will tell you 10 different things. I've used the multiple different products. Generally, I've never had an issue. I've used white lithium grease. I've used the Permatex Ultra Slick. Um, the Cummins manual for this engine calls for Permalock 105, something like that, Permaplate 105. Um, and that was fine, but that manual was written 30 years ago. Uh, white lithium grease has been around for 150 years and they've been using that forever. The only problem with white lithium grease is that if it's left in too long, it's got acidic values to it, which isn't great for the um, bearings. Basically what it comes down to is you want something that will stick to the bearing good enough that if you fire it up a month later, it hasn't ran down or washed off. Um, it will allow the two metal surfaces to mate with each other. They have to wear a little bit. They have to conform to each other. Um, so you don't want to use like a synthetic oil because that um, doesn't allow the, especially like the rings to really grab those cylinder walls and, and form into it. Best thing is to follow your manual. Some engines have different startup procedures than others. So when we re rebuild the diesels and the Cummins, we generally put them on the dyno as soon as we're done and just load them down, get that smoke rolling out, and make sure that everything is seated properly. Um, for this engine, we're going to be using the Permatex Ultra Slick. I uh, had good luck with that as well. Um, the white lithium grease, I've never had an issue, but um, we're not going to use that for this build just because. Make sure that everything is clean. Uh, the brake clean is your best friend. We're gonna wipe it down uh, with lint-free cloths. Make sure that there's nothing in there. Good idea to blow all of your oil galleries and make sure that there's nothing in there, that the, the passages are all free. And we can start assembling. So here we go. For things like the bearings, you kinda wanna see this symbol on it. Uh, a lot of aftermarket companies. Uh, pistons, Chinese, these parts are expensive because they're from Cummins, but uh, a lot less chance of anything going wrong using original equipment. Now, um, half of these don't have an oil groove. These are for the caps. The ones with the oil grooves are for the bottom so that the oil can come through and then spin around the bearing surfaces and allow the oil to go into your oil cooler. So be aware of that. Because we didn't swap out the can bearings, I just put a little dab of normal 1540 oil on there and on the lifters there as well, just the face of the lifters. Now for the middle one, I don't put the assembly lube on it. I just put a little bit of oil on the bearing surface and then put it on dry. We'll clamp the whole thing down, then we'll take this one back off again and plastic gauge this one just to check our clearances. 
Start in the center, work your way out. Torque sequence is 44, 88, and then 130 on the last pass. All right, now this is called Plastic Gauge, and buy it in a strip, super cheap. All it is is a piece of plastic or clay or something, just a little, little piece of something or other that you lay on the bearing journal, torque it down properly, you cut a little piece off like that, and it will squish it, it'll flatten it down, and it will flatten it to one of these um, measurements. If you can read that, um, the thicker it is, the less clearance you have, so two to six thou, which is basically your, your clearance for any engine. You need about two to five thou to allow for thermal expansion and for the oil to get in between. So, after wiping the oil off, just lay a little piece right there on the top. Put your bearing back on carefully. Torque it to the 44, 88, and then 130 again. And now this last step, the last torque, I'm just gonna flip the engine over so the weight of the crank is sitting on it as well. You can crank these down. I like to turn my engine over because the weight of the crank would be sitting on it then. But before I do that, I'm gonna put my camshaft back in again, otherwise my lifters are gonna fall out. So let's do that. So we've got three thou clearance, which is perfect. So if there's one that's honestly, I've never had one that's been outside of the clearance. If it is outside the clearance, you need to get your crank reground and get undersized bearings. If it's more than five or six thou or tighter than one thou or two thou. So um, this stuff, you can leave it on supposedly uh, because it will wash away in the oil. I don't, I carefully pull it off again. We'll put some assembly lube on that, tighten it down and our crankshaft is installed. I like using the gaskets and the gasket tack. Had good luck with that. Putting the camshaft back in was the opposite, but because we didn't replace the bearings, I'm just gonna lubricate the bearing surfaces. And these get torqued down to 18 foot pounds. Now would be the appropriate time to install your KDP fix. You can go online and buy a kit if you want to waste your money or you can just grab a piece of steel, drill a hole through it, put a point on it, grab a longer bolt and tighten it to 18 foot pounds. Okay, so we have another video showing you how to install the rear main seal. Um, so you can go check that out. If there's just one thing I hate doing, it's doing things twice, especially videos. So if you need some instruction on that, just a couple key things to remember. Just kind of lube up your crankshaft, uh, sand it off with some fine grit sandpaper. Don't take this plastic guide ring out. And the most important thing is these little 5 16 buggers are so small that I always always lock tight them because they have a tendency to rattle loose especially on the heavier equipment and then um, the seal doesn't leak but it leaks in behind here not so much fun a little bit of brake clean your best friend dry them off a little dabby and then put them on as tight as as you think you can go put them tight tight enough so they don't come loose Okay, now the crank is in, put a dial indicator on the end, check your end play, 
This is more crucial for manual transmissions because you're constantly pushing on that clutch. So you're constantly pushing up against that thrust bearing. You need four to 17 thou, so that's pretty lenient. We've got about six, so I'm happy with that. Check it a couple times. Yeah, we got about seven. I'm happy with that. All right, so before we get too excited with the pistons, we are gonna check our end gap on the rings. General rule of thumb is put your, put your ring in, push it down with the piston, using the piston to center up the ring. Uh, it's generally four thou for every inch. And so this being a four inch bore, should have about 16 thou. We've got 16 thou and that's plenty. So, we are ready to throw the rings on the pistons, lubricate them up, clean the bore one more time, individually as we go, and install some pistons. Here we go. All right, put the pistons in. Clean out the bore and the crank. Don't be shy. I think this thing says environmentally friendlier, which means they probably put less in a can. Nice and clean crank and bore. Now we'll take the piston and clean it. All right, after blow drying it clean, checking out our ring gap, starting with the oil ring at the bottom. I put the gap of the coil at the back, the opening at the front, the oil ring can go either way, up or down. There is no up or down. The second ring has a taper on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. That means, so that's the exhaust gas are gonna go in and hit that taper and, and expand on that ring. It's absolutely genius. I put the gap facing the pin at the other side again. You wanna make sure that you stagger your, your gaps. Yeah, don't break the ring. Don't break the ring. There it is. Put the other. If it has four rings, I could generally stagger the one gap at one end, the other gap at the other end of the pin. Never on the rocking sides, because as the piston's going down, it wants to rock. Your, your power side is on the front. And then I take it and I dump it in a pail of oil. You get all nice oil behind the rings. And that's so it's nice and smoky when you first start it up. Put the bearing on there, nice and clean. Don't touch the surface. Bearing on the cap, a little bit of assembly lube. Let's let the oil run off a little bit. Grab your piston ring compressor. This is just an old school one. But if it works, why fix it? Put a little bit of oil on the top here. The piston actually says front right on it, so unless you're illiterate and a moron, you can't really get that wrong. Drop it in. I just use the clean butt of a hammer to just hit the piston here. Tap it down. Make sure that your crank is at the bottom because you don't want to bang this up against the crank journal and risk damaging it. You can pull it down, that works. It's pretty tight. You might have to tap it. Make sure the crank journal stays clean. Pull it down. Install your cap. The numbers have to match. You can't mix and match. So there's a stamp number on there. Put a little bit of oil on your bolts. And then the first torque is 32, then 50, end up at 72. Do it in three stages. After every piston that I install, I generally turn it over once just to see if something's locking up or binding. Assembly lube is, is pretty sticky. It should turn fairly free. It goes all the way around twice. So I wipe off all the extra oil because I do have quite a bit extra. Um, it'll be smoky when it starts up, but it won't be dry. So here we go. So once you have your first piston in, it's a good idea to do a uh, protrusion test. And to do that, just set a dial indicator up, and then you can spin the engine over 
You can find top dead center when the needle goes to a certain point and then starts dropping off. So I had it right there. It should be roughly zero. See how it goes up and then comes back. So right at two thou there. That's my top dead center. And you can zero your meter. And then just slide it off of the piston onto the block. And I've got 27 thou of protrusion. I'm going to check and make sure that's what I need. Um, make sure you check it at, at either the front of the block or the back of the block because of the way the piston rocks, um, it's able to tilt the, the piston one way or another going the other way. So um, with the pin, it's not able to do that. So you get a more accurate measurement at the front or at the back. Um, you have to look up your specs. You, there's different protrusions for different models. So you get the number off the piston. You can look it up online. We'll put the link on there and uh, it'll show you how much protrusion you're supposed to have. Now, because we didn't change anything, we didn't change pistons. Um, we're not, I'm sure that's what my protrusion is supposed to be. I'll double check it yet. But um, you have to do that if you replace the pistons. 100% um, do not skip that step. So this is your oil cooler. Um, we actually just replaced that after uh, the 1.8 million kilometers, these um, bolts backed off and it started leaking. So I just replaced this because he was losing coolant. Um, so I ended up replacing the gasket on this and the oil cooler. I pressurized it overnight and uh, as I was pressurizing it that night, there was a hose fitting up top that was leaking and running down the side of the block. So I tightened that, I pressurized it for the night. It held 16 pounds all night. So I thought we had the problem licked. I was confident that it wasn't a cracked head or block, uh, but the block, the crack doesn't open up until the block gets hot. So uh, we took the oil cooler from the other engine and we'll pop that in here. There is a difference between the 4BT and the 6BT oil cooler. It has a couple more coolers in it. So probably be okay to put a 5.9 cooler in a, in a 4BT and a 3.9, but not the other way around. Um, I have a 5.9 in my 4BT and I've never had an issue. So. It's about as easy as it gets. Tighten everything down to 18 foot pounds. So we got a new oil pump. I'm gonna pop that in. Look at that, made in China. Right from the Cummins dealership. Make sure that the pen bottoms out in the hole there, that you have a little bit of backlash, and tighten these up to 18 foot pounds after you pre-lube that. Make sure you see all the oil running out. Dump that thing full of oil. Otherwise that China steel is not gonna last. It's no good, no good. It's quality inspected, see the little scribble there? Is that a car? I don't know what that is. But anyway, the inspection was completed. A video about this timing cover as well. Pretty straightforward. Clean it, this plastic thing as a guide. A little bit of silicone. Uh, the seal comes in from the back. Line up the holes, spread that RTV around. It's sad that they don't paint behind the pulleys. So we'll, we'll change that for sure. And take a wild stab at what these get torqued to. 17, no. 19, no. 18, yeah. 18 foot pounds. The tappet cover, not rocket science, the gasket has a slit that goes around it. Make the front so you can read it, pop it in place, and torque it to 18 foot pounds. Um, there's a kind of a cloth, or a, like a kind of a cover that goes around this yet. Don't worry about it. Um, most of them start peeling off. Uh, it has nothing to do with anything really. Water pump there just has a little rubber o-ring. Make sure it's nice and clean. The best tool for that, little dentist picks. We're great for cleaning up the grooves and uh, all sorts of wonderful things. Bolt it on and take a wild stab at the torque. I'm thinking 18 foot pounds. 
Okay, so we're going to get into our head. First thing we want to do is pull the injectors out because they stick out past the bottom. So support it on a wooden block to keep it up off the bench. If you lay it down and hit the tips, you'll damage the tips and you'll have to rebuild every one of your injectors. So um, these have been in for a while. It's dirty. So you can use its own nut to pull it out. The injector actually has a little ball in it that sits in a groove so the injector itself can't spin. So get yourself a 17 millimeter uh, socket or 11 sixteenths and cut it down to about three quarter inch. Just lay it right on top of the uh, nut and then take either an old injector line or you can take your injector line off of the engine if you don't have any and just put the nut on there. Spin it down. I've got some extra lines. That's why I have that. Um, then just take a 15 16 wrench. You can do this when it's in the head or in the truck too. And then just spin the, spin the nut out. What happens is this nut that holds it down is now as you're spinning it out. Um, it's kind of stuck on there because it's dirty. But this will actually just push up on it and pull it nicely right out of the groove. Um, it's very gentle on the injectors. It doesn't hurt anything. Slide hammer or, or that is also an option, but then you're, you're pulling on the body um, and some of these just don't want to come. So you can use a, a ratchet and a 15 16 socket to slide over top of everything. Problem with that is sometimes the nut spins off and you're not doing anything. So I just like to keep an eye on it, make sure that nothing is uh, binding or grabbing too, too hard and slow and steady you've pulled six injectors very effortlessly now we've got the test bench there we're going to throw these on the tester we'll see if they're all spraying right um, we also have the injectors out of the other head so um, we'll just use the six best ones and pop them back in again without rebuilding them we have another video on testing the injectors so you can check that out. Um, we won't make that video today. Oh, this one came out so nice. Why are you making a lot of me? valve springs out or pull the valves out Your valve spring compressor very straightforward what we want to do is just replace the valve seals these little caps here make sure the springs are all okay take a good look at the valves but basically because this engine's been sitting for a while we just want to clean it you can see the buildup of crap on the valves even though the face looks really good, we'll take a good look, make sure it's got a good mating surface. I don't think we're going to do a whole lot with the head other than clean it and replace the serviceable parts. So far, the valves look pretty good. If we were going to build a monster machine, we'd send the head out. Uh, we're going to check and make sure the head is nice and straight and uh, yeah, go from there. So the, the biggest problem with uh, an engine that's been sitting is it just condensates and you get rust everywhere. You don't want that rust coming in. You want to do it yourself, just a little bit of Coke, Coca-Cola, and a spray bottle. And then just let it sit for a little bit. You can see the rust start to come off already. You see how uh, it turns. Um, and then a little SOS pad from your mama's kitchen. Just give it a little, a little rub. And uh, that surface rust will come right off. So I use the wire wheel in here. I just got all the pieces that I could get, pieces that I can't get. Just take your time, give it a little scrub, let it sit for a little bit, uh, pressure wash it again, the bar saw tank, make sure that you get everything out, but that, that will get rid of that little bit of surface rust. Shove it right in the corners there. I spend about uh, 20 minutes doing this. Um, 90% of the work is just cleaning it, but that turned out much better. You got a little bit of flash rust in there, um, and it will get a little flash rust if you let it sit for another month or so, even while it's all sealed up. That's just the nature of the beast. We've tested the injectors, we've got the six best ones, uh, cleaned all our valve springs, um, cleaned all of our valves, 
basically we just want to make sure a good contact surface on the valve itself. There's no pitting, that the valve isn't bent. Take your micrometer and check it in a couple spots, make sure that it's not worn. Again, this engine is lower mileage and it was well maintained. It just sat for too long and basically we're just cleaning it and putting it back together again. The valve springs all look good. You can check them for tension and for height. There is no up or down on this, they just go in. Uh, we'll be putting the valves in with some uh, 90 weight oil, uh, which is what the manual recommends. And then um, we have the new keepers for the top. I don't know what the difference is. Um, don't, I don't know why we need these. My Cummins guy gave me new top lifters for them. I'm kind of wondering. I mean, I'll put one together and see what the keepers feel like. But uh, yeah, uh, here we go. Inspect the valve seats, make sure it's nice and even. If there's any doubt, any scars or cracks or, or anything, get them, uh, get the head sent out and get the valve seats done. But this looks really good. I'm happy with it. It's nice and uniform all the way around. Now it is super crucial you put the valves back in the same spot that they came out of. So make sure you mark them. I got a friend, one, two, three, four. So they'll go back in the same hole. Reassembly lube for the valves. Uh, if you don't have it, 80, 90 works too, but I uh, feel pretty confident in this one. Here we go. So the Cummins really like to run cool. They're very efficient, so not a lot of energy is heat. Cummins is able to use most of that heat, turn it into energy, but it actually runs too cool for my customer's liking. So this is a 190 thermostat out of a 24 valve, I guess. This is the part number, you can look that up, 375, 190. And what we do is we take this O-ring off that's on the outside and he took the O-ring off of a 12 valve and just modified, just cut a little groove in there, I think, or just shaved the end off. One or two, I'm pretty sure he shaved the end off. And then with the help of a little silicone, he sticks the thermostat in there and then the O-ring with this. And then he, the thermostat doesn't open until 190 and he seems uh, to notice that it runs a little more efficient running just a little bit warmer. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, the oil strainer bolts get torqued to 18 foot pounds. You might wanna lock tight uh, the actual strainer right there. Um, you see how the gasket there sticks out a little bit past. You want to uh, shave that off with a razor so it's nice and even with the block on the front cover and then put a little bead of silicone on the um, mating surfaces there. The gasket, I just put a little bit of silicone and, and I mean like a light little bit of silicone on the gasket on both sides basically just to hold it in place. Um, it's uh, not a new oil pan so it might have a couple little imperfections in it here and there. Start in the middle with the bolts and work your way out just like you would ahead that way and that way and back and forth like you're running sprints and uh, I'll let you guys take a wild wild stab just pick a number somewhere between 17 and 19 as to what the torque is going to be so here we go. Alright put the old valve covers on and just hit it with some uh, matte black paint. Uh, make it look 100% better. Um, if you use gloss paint, it's really hard to find out where your oil leaks are because everything is shiny and it just goes dull after a while anyway. We're going to paint the twin banks black 
Um, I'll just kind of buff that off and then we'll paint right over top of where it says twin banks and then we'll just take a flapper wheel on a grinder and we'll just take the paint off of the high spot and the twin banks uh, will be shiny. Uh, we're going to polish the valve covers, um, so we're just going to sand them off. We have a video on how to polish the, the valve covers when I did it on my Silverado. And then the fuel lines are going to be silver. And just to give it a little bit of character, all one color is kind of bleh. So we're going to make it look like a million bucks when we're done. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> All right, this one's 18 foot pounds. This one's 18, this one's 18, and this one's 18. All right, so we're gonna mix it up a little bit. These exhaust bolts are th 32 foot pounds. Start in the middle, work your way out. Uh, the bolts to hold the turbo to the exhaust manifold are also 32 foot pounds. But if you can get a torque wrench on that, hit me up. Uh, I want you to work for me because at some point you got to put a wrench on it and kind of get a feel for those bolts. Uh, same with the 18 foot pounds. Um, when it's inside, super critical. Take your time, especially the oil pan, things like that. Make sure that it's even, that you're pulling the gasket up evenly and that you're not uh, wrecking the gasket by over torquing them. Uh, but you kind of get a feel for it after a while, kind of like driving a car, you're not looking, if you've been driving for 15 years, you don't need to look at your speedometer every eight seconds to see how fast you're going. The bigger bolts here, that is also 32 foot pounds, holding the AC compressor bracket on is 32 foot pounds, put the gasket in behind there, very straightforward, don't need to make videos on that. Um, these little guys, I don't know what they are, but uh, make them tight, don't make them come loose and uh, don't over torque them, sorry, I forgot that torque. That's 92 foot pounds for the front flywheel. Now I've basically just assembled it to make sure all my parts are on there, that they're counted for, that they're painted. That looks good for a thumbnail. And now it's time to clean up my bench, make sure that there's nothing forgotten, put everything back in the toolbox, clean up, reorganize. I gotta take the, the head isn't bolted on or anything, it's just sitting on there. One, to keep things clean. Two, to uh, make sure that everything is kosher and that I'm not missing any pieces. I wrecked one fuel line actually, so I gotta get that on order. But the head's coming back off again so we can put the block back into the truck. And then um, we'll show you guys how to torque the head and everything down once it's in there. As you can see, these caps aren't pulled down yet. Um, and we need a little bit more sanding to make them nice and shiny and then we'll clear coat them as well as the turbo and the 90 here. Uh, all I did was basically hit that with a wire wheel. Took about five minutes um, to do a decent job. Gets all that scaliness off and when you pop the hood it just looks good to start off with. Now I'm going to touch the alternator. Um, you can see the difference between like uh, the tensioner and the alternator. It just gets kind of scaly. And that's just, uh, at some point we're gonna stop. Um, I just painted the, the intake pipe and it looks like a million bucks on a very reasonable budget. You can do all this in your own place. Um, yeah, here we go.